Can Big Navi beat the RTX 3080 Ti? Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So I saw that there was a recent leak from the YouTuber known as Moore's Law is Dead. If you want to go ahead and see his actual leak video, there will be a link in the description below. But in his leak, I believe he stated that the new RDNA 2 based Big Navi GPU would be between 40% and 50% faster than the RTX 2080 Ti. And on top of that, it would have, I believe he said, 72 compute units. And you know, that got me thinking. I think it's about time that we take this new information that we just got and we compare it to all of the new information I got about the RTX 3080 Ti and try and figure out which one will win. And on top of that, you know, 72 compute units got me thinking, is it going to be 60 compute units, 64 or 72? I've been throwing around 64 and 72 for a while, so let's discuss those two numbers in comparison. So first of all, in order to figure out which one is going to be faster, we first need to know how fast the RTX 3080 Ti is going to be. And so in my recent video, I discussed how fast it was going to be and the specs. And so let's go over those real quick and then we'll talk about Big Navi. So for the RTX 3080 Ti, it's likely going to have around 5,300 CUDA cores. It will have a clock speed of presumably 1,740 megahertz, which in reality will probably boost up to around the mid 1,900 megahertz or maybe the lower 1,900 megahertz range because of their GPU boost algorithm. And then uh, for an IPC increase, it'll probably get somewhere around 10% increase, but this is something that we just don't know for sure yet. So at this point, we're really just taking a guess. And then in terms of the memory, I believe what we're going to get is 18 gigabits per second GDDR6 on a 384-bit bus. And of course, that means we'll most likely get 12 gigabytes of it running at a bandwidth of 864 gigabytes per second to power the roughly, you know, between 30 and 40% increase. I'm leaning more towards 35 to 40% increase over the 2080 Ti. And so taking in all these specs, that means it gives us 20.8 teraflops of rough GPU performance performance. And of course, that's not taking into account, um, say, an IPC gain, because I'm just going to assume that Big Navi and the upcoming Ampere cards are going to get roughly a 10% increase, but it's likely that AMD will get a bigger increase in IPC than NVIDIA. But hey, we really don't know. So now that we know that information, let's go ahead and compare it to what the two different models of Big Navi are, in my opinion, most likely going to be. First, let's go over the smaller one, which will, I think, probably have 64 compute units, but again, it could have a little more, a little less. This is just what my best guess is. And so for the 64 compute unit version, that means we'll get a total of 4,096 shaders, a clock speed of what I believe will probably be around 2.3 gigahertz for its max boost clock. Now, it could be a little higher, it could be a little lower, but the reason why I'm going for 2.3 gigahertz and not the, say, 2.5 gigahertz that... I believe was in the Moore's Law is Dead leak is because while it might be possible for these chips to hit 2.5 gigahertz, I'm going to assume that if they want to keep the power levels reasonable, even though this is a new architecture that should be able to clock much higher, if we take a look at, say, the PS5, where that thing hits around 2.23 gigahertz, I believe, you would probably see an increase when you move to desktop, but we also have to take into account the fact that the PS5 GPU is only 36 compute units, so if you move up to 64 compute units or beyond, you gotta expect that you probably won't be able to increase that clock speed too much considering the fact that the power draw is gonna go up substantially. So that's why I went with 2.3 gigahertz in any case. And then for an IPC increase, this is something that we don't really know for sure, but I'm guessing it'll be at least a 10% increase, much like the Ampere GPU, but probably even a little bit more than that. And then for the memory, again, here we'll probably see 18 gigabits per second GDDR6 on a 384-bit bus for a total memory bandwidth of 864 gigabytes per second. And again, likely 12 gigabytes of VRAM, but, you know, they could change it up. Now, taking all these specs for what could be a 64 compute unit RDNA 2-based Big Navi, that gives us a total performance of 18.8 teraflops of GPU performance. And then if we compare that to the 3080 Ti, the 3080 Ti at the boost clock of 1935 megahertz would roughly be around 11% faster on paper if we don't take into account any uh, IPC differences. So again, if Big Navi has a bigger IPC lift than the upcoming Ampere GPUs have, well then maybe AMD actually could beat them with the 64 compute unit card. I don't know, we'll just have to wait and see, but my guess is that the 3080 Ti would probably be 
around 11% faster. All right, so now that we've discussed a possible 64 compute unit Big Navi, let's move on to the bigger possible 72 compute unit one, which was not only rumored, but one that I've actually speculated on in the past as well. So for this GPU, it would have 72 compute units, which means you would get a total of 4,608 shaders. Now, the reason why it would ha probably have 72 compute units and not 80 is that it'll probably be derived from an 80 compute unit GPU, but a GPU that large is probably going to have defects. So if they want to get the most out of it, they'll probably sell you the gaming variant with about eight compute units shaved off. But in any case, with 4,608 shaders, the clock speed will likely be 2.2 gigahertz, a decrease from the 2.3 gigahertz, because again, as you continue to increase the amount of shaders in the GPU, the power draw is gonna go up. And so if you have really high clock speeds, you could get to a point where you're just drawing too much power for it to be reasonable for most PC users. And of course they don't want to do that. And, you know, again, they could end up hitting somewhere around like, you know, 2.4, 2.5 gigahertz with overclocking. That's always possible. But I think out of the box, the max boost clock you will see again will be 2.2 gigahertz. Now to power this, I believe they'll actually end up using either 19 or 20 gigabits per second GDDR6. If they use 20 gigabits per second GDDR6 on a 384 bit bus, well then you'll get 960 gigabytes per second, which is an insane amount of memory bandwidth and definitely more than enough to power this card. Or if they really wanna make sure that they're getting enough power to it and these things do end up clocking higher than I think they will, they might end up even using HBM2E, which could deliver over a terabyte per second memory bandwidth, which would be pretty wild. And the reason why I don't think that's as likely is the fact that HBM is just a lot more expensive. So they're probably not gonna wanna use it. So if we take a look at all these specs that I just went over, that would give us a total of 20.3 teraflops of GPU performance. And if we compare that to the 3080 Ti and we assume that their IPC is the same, well then the 3080 Ti would actually be 2.4% faster. Now again, we're looking at a situation here where it's really going to come down to the final clocks and the IPC that they get. But it looks like here that if AMD does produce a 72 compute unit GPU like is being rumored, it would be possible for them to win against NVIDIA in traditional rasterization. Now, the big question here is how fast is it going to be in ray tracing? Because there have been several rumors going around that NVIDIA will be beefing up its ray tracing performance significantly for its upcoming RTX 3000 series cards. So I really don't know, and nobody seems to know yet quite for sure, how fast AMD's RDNA 2 architecture is going to be at ray tracing. So that's going to be a big question and how are they going to compete against DLSS 2.0 because if that feature continues to be implemented into more and more games Nvidia could end up having a card that's technically slower but in reality when you compare the two with DLSS 2.0 on it could end up actually being significantly faster and you wouldn't even really be able to tell the difference in the image quality so that's something they have to worry about but again with 72 compute units it's possible However, with 64 compute units, it would still be really close. And at that point, if they're just very aggressive with their pricing, I think it's, you know, there's no reason why th most people would buy the 3080 Ti over a 64 compute unit card, other than the fact that NVIDIA has really incredible marketing. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens when they release. One thing's for sure, I really hope none of these GPUs are over $1,000 because I just can't handle any more of that. It's gonna be a no buy from me if you're charging anywhere over like, I don't wanna give them any ideas, so I'm gonna say $750. Because <laughs> honestly, enough is enough. We need to get things back to a sane level again. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about these leak specs? Are you interested in Big Navi or the RTX 3000 series? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll try and get back to as many of you as I can. And of course, I will see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.